This week on the Power Hour, we've got Green Day and Fear, and our episode is Punk AF. God, that is so punk. Now, Katie, were you punk growing up? Oh, yeah, totally. I loved Bare Naked Ladies. What about you? Welcome to the Power Hour here on Axis TV, your source for all things rock and metal. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm Josh Bernstein. And I'm Katie Babs. And we've got an incredible show for you tonight. We have got Lee Ving of the band Fear and Green Day. Matt, this show is Punk AF. Now, Matt, what does AF stand for? Um, it says as um, featured. It's featured on the Power Hour. Oh. That's right. We'll also be counting down the top 10 countdown as voted by you. So don't forget that QR code that's really easy to click on. Well, guys, last week, uh, Green Day was the number one video of the week with the American Dream is Killing Me. Here is a little clip of that from last week. This week we have five brand new videos for you, including this one from Mike's Dead. I want it right now, I wanna bite down, I wanna burn this mother until the lights out. I'm cobalistic, I'm eating this tick. I wanna do what I wanna, I wanna do what I please. Alright, that's a little tease of Mike's Dead. This week it's music news. You know it's my favorite segment. We always talk about it, but this one is no exception. And this week we have learned that the Welcome to Rockville announcement is upon us. I cannot believe 150 bands. Are you kidding me? It's incredible because there are so many great bands on this bill. People ask you, well, who do you want to see? I'm like, well, pretty much everybody. I mean, it's 150 bands. There are so many parts of the rock genre covered, really. When I, when I saw this lineup, I was like, they're bringing Download Festival to the United States, and we haven't really seen that. So I think this is definitely going to be one of the biggest rock metal festivals to date in the United States. This feels almost uh, European in nature, uh, the style of it. Matt, if you could pick one band that you definitely have to see there, who's it going to be? Wow. Yeah. Uh, if it's one band that I definitely want to see, oh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been really hard to make that decision, to be honest with you. I'm excited to carry Kings out from retirement yep. and playing from Slayer, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, look, we've got uh, Motley Crue back. I'm excited to see Judas Priest uh, with that new album out by that time. And they cover their entire career when they do a set now. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to see Priest back. And strong, also strong pyro game, yeah. And Jelly Roll, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, Jelly Roll and Limp Bizkit, y'all. You like Limp Bizkit? I don't know, I guess. All right, our next piece of news is that they've announced the 2023 Grammy nominations. Now, this is always uh, a bit controversial and debatable, but mm -hmm. our own Spirit Box, our dear friends, got the Power Hour bump yes. and have been nominated alongside Slipknot, Metallica, and a lot of others. What do you guys think of this year's nomination class? I think it's great. I think the next step is definitely televising the rock and metal categories because it's so annoying that they don't do that already. Yep. That's probably the only reason why I don't actually watch the Grammy Awards. If they did televise the rock and metal categories, it would be a different story. I, I agree with you 100%. And in the uh, best rock album category, I think it's going to be between Metallica's 72 Seasons or Foo Fighters, but here we are. I think, you know, it's yeah. going to be a toss up between those two, but there are some uh, really great bands yeah. nominated for a change. So, I would love to see Disturbed yeah. or Spirit Box take one home. Now, yeah, who has had a better week than Spirit Box this week, right? The box is, is, is out of control. The box is definitely out of control. They were recently in the studio, and I got word that they did this in under, like, six hours. They went into the studio with Megan the Stallion, and she is a massive R&B hip-hop legend, probably one of the best female rappers in the entire world. They went in there, they started collaborating together, and by the end of it, Megan said, I'm calling my team, we're getting this out tomorrow, I love it, and they're screaming on it. There is electric guitars, there's breakdowns. It is probably the sickest song I've heard in a while, and it kind of reminds me of Linkin Park and Jay-Z. Yeah, it's called Cobra, and it's the rock version of the song, so check it out if you want to see Courtney doing her thing. So good. Men. 
It's almost borderline jolly, but is it jolly time good news? Nay, but jolly time good news <laughs> is here and upon us. Now guys, we just heard this news. Now, this news is very jolly to the uh, Power Hour crew here because A, Matt and I are big Rush fans and Katie is Canadian. Yes. But it has been announced that both Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson seem to be down with recording new Rush music, which uh, they said after the passing of Neil Peart, I uh, wasn't in the cards. I mean, Matt, what, what are you hearing? I'm hearing that they definitely want to perform again. And Getty got like that urge because he finished two songs, two solo songs to go along with his book, My Effin' Life. And he's doing like a yep. spoken word tour where he's having a celebrity interviewer every time he hits the road. He also has that new TV show on Paramount Plus where he interviews bass players. Yep. Robert Trujillo from Metallica. I've seen the episode that's not out yet that he did with Chris Novoselic from Nirvana. And it's amazing, like watching him flying and fly by night playing in the background in one of uh, Chris's planes. You know, those guys jamming to fly by night together and Chris is on the accordion. <laughs> and then he hits like crazy. I mean, I've said it for it's, years, bass, bass is sexy. It is. I mean, I, this is just exciting, especially for all of us Canadians. Exactly. Well, uh, we wish this all comes true, Getty and Alex. Uh, there'll be a jolly good time if you guys record some new music. Bring it on, sirs. Bring it on. But now it is time to get into our five brand new music videos of the week. And who do we got up next, Matt? Well, we've got Papa Roach, and it's another song from their Ego Trip album. But what's really incredible is how they've announced they have a new line called Broken Home Goods, which is named after the song Broken Home. And because everybody makes it sings Cut My Life Into Pizza, they've actually made pizza cutters that they're selling on their website and they also have a coffee grinder grinds it and it's i think it's called grind my life into uh, <laughs> grind these beans into pieces Incredible. what do you think of that well i think uh <laughs> spoiler alert i think you guys just saw what your christmas gifts will be oh that sounds great all right here we go papa roach leave a light on All right, there you go. The first new music video of the week, Papa Roach with Leave the Light On. All right, this next one is from Cobra Page with the band Cobra and the Lotus. Now, I met her many moons ago when she was a protege of Gene Simmons, who turned me on to her music. And we're so excited to hear her new track right here. That's Cobra Page and Under One Sun. And I knew Katie would appreciate this. She's from Calgary. She's she Canadian. Is. Oh my God, there's so much Canada in one episode here. I love it. When we come back, we've got three more brand new music videos. Plus our top 10 countdown as voted by you. Plus leaving of fear and of course, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer's Green Day. It's all coming up on the Power Hour, which is Punk AF on Axis TV. Hold on, you guys. I just got to post this to my subscribers really quick. Posted. Oh. 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 It was my landlord. Welcome back to the Power Hour here on Axis TV, your source for all things metal, rock, and punk. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm Josh Bernstein. I'm Katie Babs. And next up, we have a song it's been on the countdown for a long time, but it's reemerged now. It's number one rock song on active rock radio across the USA. And it's one of the singles from the latest album from Beartooth. It's called Might Love Myself. Ooh, then it took my body over. All right, that's the recent hot new single from Beartooth. Now, guys, they hit number one shortly after being on the Power Hour. Coincidence? Uh, they have a lot of thanks to give. I don't think so. I don't think it was coincident at all. So, was, not, yeah. not one bit. Yeah. The next new music video we have for you is from the band Fear, and Lee is going to be joining us right here on the Power Hour in a little while. Here's their latest. Yeah.
There's the band Fear, who started in the late 1970s. Lee Ving will be our guest very soon. That's called For Right and Order from their brand new album. All right, and here's a new video from our friend Mike Stead. This one's called Bite Down. I want it right now. I want to bite down. I want to burn this mother to the lights out. Dead with Bite Down. Now, when we come back, we still have our top 10 countdown as voted by you. And leaving of the band Fear. That's all coming up on the Power Hour on Axis TV. Welcome back to the Power Hour here on Axis TV. I'm Matt Pinfield here with Josh Bernstein and Katie Babs. And our next guest is the one and only leaving of the legendary punk band Fear. Howdy, everybody. Thanks for having me here. It's good to be here. We're blessed that not only are you here, but we have new fear music for the first time in many, many moons. Tell us all about this new record. What can longtime fans expect? They can expect one of the evil, one of the evil. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> or, or time signatures such as those. No, I hope you have not mellowed with age. No, sir. Good. <laughs> That's very how, important to know. How long have you been working on this new music for? Oh, it's a, a collection of things that we've had up our sleeve for a while. And uh, we recorded it a while back and it's uh, just about to come out. So it's very timely. Amazing. You know, so many people have loved Fear and been influenced and covered your music. Of course, you know, from a perfect circle to Megadeth, you know, Metallica. Uh, I mean, the list goes on on Bad Religion, and then of course Guns N' Roses, who put it on their yes. Spaghetti Incident album. How did he, were you happy to see that many people covering and paying tribute to the band? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I was very stoked, and uh, and, and really pleased with the the popularity of this kind of pace oriented music. And when I first first heard it or heard about it even, you know, way, way long time ago, I just set myself to composing, you know, song after song. Because it was it was fun. It was it got the crowd moving rather than, you know, just letting people sit with their chin on their hand and uh, waiting to see what they could expect. We wanted to draw them in and play with a speed that, that brought everybody in and, and made everybody want to join into this mosh m maze of uh, craziness that's going on in front of the stage. And, uh, and it's, it's just been great. It's, it's, the, it's more than a, than a writer and a, a, a band organizer could wish for. Lee was, was friends with legendary comedian uh, John Belushi, and you guys uh, played for, uh, SNL, which is one of the most yes. uh, infamous uh, incidents of all time. Uh, we yes. were actually just watching it uh, before, uh, before you came on here. And a lot of those bands you just mentioned, you invited a lot of other bands from the scene to come and uh, support, and uh, maybe a couple things might have gotten broken uh, that day. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And it, 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 had it, uh, it was John that got us onto the show, may he rest in peace. He was our great friend and we miss him terrible. To get to play Saturday Night Live was, is pretty special, you know, that, that's not everybody gets that chance. And we, we really looked forward to it. They had assigned seats for people here and there, but uh, the people that were the, the younger crowd that was coming to the show because there was punk rock happening on that show, then they had found out about it. John got the, the seating arrangement. They were prepared more for to keep whatever youth movement had showed up to see the show in a different part of the studio. But John got their seating amongst everybody right in front. When we, we counted off the first song, it was a menagerie like it normally, yeah, yeah. normally is. The camera pans to John and John just looked at the camera and went. <laughs> the uh, punk ethos, right? The punk ethos, exactly. Yes, you know, it, yeah. and it, why it needed, that was important. It needed to be included in the in whatever's in the front of what's going on, not sequestered in the back somewhere right. for whatever security reasons or safety reasons or whatever else. And and he was instrumental in getting it 
to be orchestrated that way so that it was, it was all in one group and it, it was able to demonstrate the, 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 the style of the thing in a, in a more exact way. Speaking of film and television, you're obviously no stranger to the camera yourself. Yes, and there has been I a mean, couple of opportunities. Yeah, just a few, just, just a <laughs> touch of uh, some camera work that you've done. I could tell that uh, Flashdance was going to be something special and it was great to take part in it and it was just as oil and water as you can imagine uh, the style of music that we were doing and what was going to be the the theme but it, it turned out great and, and we just had a ball doing it adrian was really cool we got along really really well and it was it was fun we had would a ball. you say that was your favorite project that you worked on or did you have a, another favorite well streets of fire was great streets too. of fire clue was great clue People yeah always remember yes. you for clue clue too. was great too i got yeah. a chance to like sit and speak the english language a little more <laughs> in, 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 in that and in, in, then in some of the others see i mean the one thing i remember when i was a kid was lee for a brief moment you were angela's boyfriend on uh, Who's the Boss. Yes. And, and I was like, whoa, like that's, like I know who that guy is. How, that's a, well, I knew you at that time as Mr. Body, and I didn't, want, didn't know why Mr. Body from Clue was on Who's the Boss. But once I, I learned more <laughs> about fear, I was like, this is even cooler. But what was it like being on the set of Who's the Boss? It just seems insane. It was just great, man. Everybody was great. That's the Tony Danza. Tony Danza. And man, it was, it was just, just cool. Tony was great. All the, all the people that worked regularly on the show were great made me feel right at home and I had a ball. It was cool. I really loved it. Yeah, you know, it's amazing to me that uh, also you and Flea started acting around the same time, both coming out of the LA scene. Yes. And then Flea ended up playing bass for Fear for a year before yes. the Chili Peppers days. Flea just plays great, of course. He's a great bass player. Tremendous sense of humor. We had a ball. It was cool. That's great. That's amazing. Well, the first thing I want to do is, is, is a new segment we've never done before, but I want to try it out, which is called Finish That Lyric. Now, Lee uh, is one of the greatest lyricists of all time. And, oh, thank you. And um, I'm going to start a couple lyrics here, and if you, if you could do me the honors of finishing them. But one of those, um, uh, she don't want a chicken, she don't want a roast. She wants a double dose of my beef bologna. Yeah! <laughs> Song two, yes. side one of the album. Matt, do you have any lyrics you'd like uh, Lee to finish for you? Um, what would you say after well, Christmas? Well, it was it was all with a, a touch and touch of humor and uh, the significance of it in everybody's life is obvious, and so it was it was very tempting to do, and of course uncommon in in a way. Yeah. And to pop it in there and then see it actually attract the attention that I thought it might. Was, was very cool. Christmas is a, a holiday classic that all should enjoy. I'm gonna wrap up the segment with you know, my final favorite lyric, which is very simple again. I don't care about you. F you. Here we go! <laughs> yeah! That's it! Thank you, Lee. Fantastic. Thank you. Bravo! And uh, favorite version of that song, a favorite cover of a Fear song, last quick thing. I'm, I'm so happy that anyone had decided to do one of our songs uh, that I, I have, all of them are my favorites. The new Fear album for Right and Order, uh, available now, right? And, yes. Uh, all right, we are starting our top 10 countdown, and number 10 this week goes to New Year's Day with their latest vampire. You can At number 10 this week, New Year's Day and Vampire. And up next, it's our guest you're gonna see later on in the show, the amazing Green Day from their forthcoming album, Saviors. This is the American Dream is Killing Me. That's the American Dream is Killing Me by Green Day. Now, Lee, you see, this is all your fault. You started this trend 50 years ago. You created all this great punk music, and now, now everyone's doing it. But, uh, you know, it was you're, a good you're, idea. To, you're to blame. 
Thank you very much. We thank you. We cannot thank you enough. And uh, what an honor that you were here. And uh, you are welcome anytime, sir. We hope you come back to the Power Hour. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for having me. It's and I think I'm going to watch Clue for Thanksgiving, just because you've been hanging out with me. You know what? Yes, good sir. idea. Let's all do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Great family favorite. And you can see Lee in that. Well, when we come back, our top 10 countdown continues. Plus, our chat with Green Day. And we'll find out where the Foo Fighters are on the list this week. All coming up next in the Power Hour here on Axis TV. What do they know? What do they know? Beep, 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 beep below this. Welcome back to the Power Hour here on Axis TV. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm Josh Bernstein. And I'm Katie Babs. And our next video is number eight, as voted by you. It's the LA band Dirty Honey. Their album's called Can't Find the Breaks, but they recently found the breaks when their bus broke down in Pennsylvania. And their guitarist, John Notto, tweeted, we are caffeine deficient. We are hungry, angry, but we're fine. Anyway, check out their latest. It's called Won't Take Me Alive. All right, that was Dirty Honey with Won't Take Me Alive. Now coming at the number seven spot is the one and only Tim Montana. Now Tim- You can do better than that. You okay. can do better than that. Come on, give it. Tim Montana! Uh, the one and only from Montana, Mr. Tim Montana. Woo! With the devil you know. Good job, good job. seven was Tim Montana. I love that he's got the entire bar saying that one. I feel like we're not going to pay for drinks when we go there. Yeah, I, well, I know he's coming in in two weeks. He's going to be here on the Power Hour, and he just finished filming a movie with Samuel L. Jackson, a Western. All right, but our next one at number six is Sophie Lloyd featuring Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm. It's imposter syndrome. Up one spot to number six on the countdown this week because of you. It's guitar genius Sophie Lloyd with help from Lizzie Hale and imposter syndrome right there. At number five, we got Death Valley Dreams with Leave Me Alone. Here you go. go. All right, that was Death Valley Dreams. Now we hope that their manager does well and this band succeeds because their manager has been busy selling hot dogs at the Aftershock Festival. And some part of root beer as well. But yes. uh, he's a good man, Mr. Josh Balls. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they, uh, you know, seriously, that band is doing really well. They're, uh, those guys, like I said, they used to be members of Cold, Lifer, and uh, they're really bringing back that resurrection, that mix of 80 synth with hard rock. So I love cool. it, it sounds great, and uh, it's, refreshing almost to hear. I dig it. I dig it, Josh Balls. Okay, at number four, a recent guest right here on the Power Hour, out on the road right now with Nina Strauss killing it everywhere. It's Mammoth WVH, and I'm all right. moving up two spots on our chart with I'm All Right at number four. But when we come back, we're going to be sitting down and chatting with Green Day. Plus, your top three songs of the week. 
That's all next, right here on the Power Hour on Axis TV. Welcome back to the Power Hour, your source for all things rock, metal, and punk. I'm Matt Pinfield. It's your boy, Josh Bernstein. Your boy, huh? It's Katie Babs. Well, our next guest is the trio from Oakland, California, who are one of the biggest rock bands in the world, and I'm talking about Green Day. We caught up with them at Louder Than Life, and they just announced that their new album, Saviors, is going to be coming out in January. And they're everywhere in the world right now it's, doing uh, little gigs at pubs like in England and yeah, Ireland. It's incredible. We're celebrating the 30th anniversary of mm -hmm. Dookie and the 20th anniversary of American Idiot, two landmark albums. Yeah. It's wild. And it was so cool to get to interview all three of them because uh, we weren't quite expecting that, as people will see in the interview. Yeah, though, Billy but. Joe is a little bit of a, a, a late minute addition and surprise, and uh, I think we got punked. Yes, Literally we kind of did. By the Kings of Punk. I <laughs> think we, we did. did. Uh, from Cray Crawled in under the table. Let's check this out right now. It's our interview with Green Day on the Power Hour. Green Day is with us. This is Josh Bernstein. It's Katie Babs. And I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm here with my old Mike friends. And I'm Trey Bernstein. Yes, there he is. <laughs> Trey Cool. Trey know. Babs, Trey Bernstein, cool. Trey Pinfield. I mean, it all sounds good. All if sounds you have the first name Trey, it all sounds good. Yeah. yeah. 35 plus years of Green Day, more than any other song. Well, oh my God! What the? Who is that? Oh, what's going on? Oh, wait, how did you get yeah. over there? That was... I love that. I'm discussing set lists with these guys. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you might as well do Actually, over here or hang it out. Yeah. So you guys don't remember this, but I was a freshman at college, 1993. I worked at my radio station. They sent me an interview, Bad Religion. Uh, the opening band at Roseland was a little band named Green Day, oh, yeah. and I went inside your book bus. You were like in a a touring library, that, I believe. That, you still have that, yeah, but the, you it was still the, have it. Uh, yeah, the bookmobile. Oh, we, we don't have it, book but it is still rolling around. Yeah, we have, uh, someone that's like a, this, this woman's a, a super fan, she has it. Before GPS, right? I mean, there was like, you know, you got the- Ram McNally. McNally. Yeah. yeah, McNally. Thomas guide. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you guys sleep on a mattress in the back of a, a mattress store one time out by a dumpster? We were on tour and I, I was driving, the one time that I was driving, and it is where, during the Kerplunk tour, and we, me and Aaron Comet bus, where he was our roadie at the time, and we drove up behind, there was a Denny's, and we had no place to stay, and it had to have been about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and there was a there was a, a, a mattress in a dumpster, and we pulled it out, and then we, we slept on that. I, yeah. There was no reason for it, we probably should have just slept in the seats, but I don't know, it was like- well, How else are you gonna get bed bugs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a special from the source. Yeah. 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 Touring overseas, and there was some weird specimen. It was like something like it was a head or was uh, something. Sleepy. Oh, sleepy. Sleepy head. Can we talk about sleepy? Well, we were we all had the choice, but I think I ended up uh, uh, sleeping next to a head in a jar in uh, in, was it Copenhagen? Okay. It was in Cope. Yeah, we played this squat called Ungdomshuset. Yeah. And it was in like the like Christiania and the Free City inside of uh, Copenhagen. Yeah, it was and so it's like an anarchist squad. Anyways, the guy that was running the sound said, you can stay at my house, you can meet my friend Sleepy. And I, and I sound like I'm from Transylvania right now, but he was like, <laughs> and we were like, okay, sure, Sleepy it is, you know, as long as we got a place to stay. So we went to his house and he pulls out this formaldehyde jar on wheels and he put, pushes it out and there was a, a head. <laughs> There's a real. <laughs> it was like a human, human head. head. Oh. Yeah, and they're like, this is this is sleepy, and yep. like, Mike and Trey slept in the room with it, yeah. but I wouldn't. I was, I was too freaked out. At that point, did you freak out? Like, were you up all night? Like, you, you just couldn't sleep after that? Because that would have freaked me out. It freaked me out. I was, I'm like, I'm not sleeping next to that thing. I was more concerned about the guy who owned the head. <laughs> Because yeah. He, yeah. his head was actually on his body, yeah. Yeah. and he could actually kill us. Yeah. But the head was actually a no real danger. Great B sides. We get up the 30th anniversary of, of Dookie coming up. That great version of Tired of Waiting for You. You guys did that as a B side of Basket Case. It's neat to see all this stuff unearthed after all the all, the, all these years of getting uh, sort of it's coming back again, and we're all we get to listen and go, oh yeah, shit, I forgot I record. <laughs> we recorded that. Yeah. There's so much stuff I don't even remember because um, you know. Too many new memories. Like walking the dog, we were, on, you know, which came out as an outtake, which is just, you can hear, you're like, it's take six. It's like, I love the rawness yeah. of those. It's, the, it's really cool. Hitting the bong in the beginning of it. <laughs> 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 what, we did a bunch of them up at, at Trey's 
parents house and at, at their property and we just hung out and shot guns and like went on hikes and smoked weed yeah. and then like we just recorded a bunch at the the house that uh the long view video was shot in so yeah. we uh, we're all living there and um so yeah, we just like, and I love those four track demos. They're cool. so great. And your fans have been talking online about how different when I come around is like how much they love the fact that now they even are under that demo, different lyrics and everything. That would, and especially Basket Case. Yeah. was like a different song. That's a whole <laughs> long story yeah. about methamphetamine and, <laughs> and like the next day feeling terrible and never wanting to hear that song ever again yeah. until I felt better and then I rewrote the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I All of us here have had some very bad tattoos, but I would love to know what you guys think is your worst tattoo e that each yeah, of you have. Great. I yeah. kind of regret getting Matt Penfield was here on my butthole. Yeah. <laughs> but, I know. you know, it's just memories. Just... We yeah. knew it. I was, you know, yeah, I was trying to keep that a secret for an awfully long time, Trey. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't Trey was here. Wild Nights in San Francisco. He had, to guys, do, he had to do two sittings for that. Yes, he did. Hey. It was unbelievable. Hey. 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 And and the guy used one of those yoga tables, right? Yeah. Your ass was sitting in that, like the two cracks <laughs> there. Was, I yes. love our, our, our mutual all of that love for The Clash and your version of I Fought the Law, which is so great. My first time I ever heard The Clash was from MTV. Rock the Casbah. Uh, Rock the Casbah and... Um, this is Radio Clash. Yeah. So my first, the first time I ever heard of that, heard them, it, they didn't sound like what you would think of being traditional punk rock at all. Yeah. And so I was like, these guys are, it sounded more like dance music. To yeah. Me. So it took like uh, several years after that where I started kind of getting into like the first album and giving up rope. And yeah. Of course, like Lennon Calling. Yeah. yeah so. The greatest records of all time. I got a little Clash tattoo gun. It says Sharif don't like it. Thinks it's not kosher. Is that, what that, says? Yeah. Is that what it says? Sharif don't like it. When you deep dive with the Clash, you just realize how good musicians they were, and yeah. just how ex like how they weren't afraid to go there. Uh, they were weren't afraid to take chances. Yeah. You know, and really go uh, dive into the unknown. We're celebrating Dookie's 30th year in February, and also it's going to be 20 years when American Idiot, right? Like by the yeah. end of the year, that blows yeah. my mind too. Yeah. A new album that I know is coming like down the line, but it's still fun to write and perform, isn't it? You guys, it's that French. It is, right? and it's it's a lot of hard work too. You know, I mean, yeah. it takes. If you think about it, I mean, for us and the way that we make records and the way we write songs, it, it takes like two and a half, three years to, to do it. So you have to be. It's really you, and you can't force it. And you have to wait for moments of inspiration and then sometimes you think you're inspired but you're actually not hold yeah. on I, I do believe a ufo just landed <laughs> yeah. sorry oh my god it's happening yeah. Yeah. It confirmed scary. i knew it you guys love each other what's the secret you know to the you know you guys have been 30 years longer together all original what keeps you guys uh so close here because it's infectious what is your secret what's the secret oh my god there's a lot of those <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of secrets oh yeah. where they they say keep keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think inspiration too. You know, when a good song, Billy will get a good song, he'll pop up and he'll send it to me and Trey and we'll be like, oh wow. You know, and that that first one will start something happening. And we get in a room and we make things happen. You know, Ch that challenge of yourself, right? Challenge yourself a little more and a little more and like, I don't know, you, I want to know what's what's hidden underneath there, you know? Like, what's in our future? Who knows? But, like, but keep searching, keep digging for gold, you know? Thanks for what continue to do what you do when you bring up kids and people to play on stage in making their dreams come true, giving them that inspiration to want to yeah. play guitar and be in a band. That's just one of the coolest things I love that you still it's, do. It's wild that, like, there's people that we, bring, that we brought up on stage, like, that they keep playing music. They kept like you know one of them, one the singer from 1975 was it when he was a kid I brought him on stage apparently oh, yeah. wow Matty yeah. Uli, so he yeah he, he yeah. brought him on stage and then, yeah he must have been yeah. must have been a kid about like 13 or 14 years old but. and he's yet to return the favor yeah, yeah. yeah what is he gonna bring you on stage yeah, what's yeah. going on what's going on thank you so much for taking the time to spend this with us today. Absolutely. Got nothing but love always, for you. Incredible. This has been the Power Hour. Billy Joe Armstrong, Trey Cool, Mike Dern, Green Day. Ow! As you can see on my face, I was obviously quite excited that Billy made an appearance, but also, why have they not aged? They looked, I, I remember thinking like, 
Who's that man under the table? Oh, it's Billy Joe Armstrong. And then what is his skin routine? Right? Those are my, yeah. those are my, my like three. Like they look I mean, exactly the same. Like they did when they were uh, starting out yeah. and they finally blew up with Dookie back in 1994. I'm gonna say something controversial. I yeah. love those guys. Yeah. I love those guys! <laughs> well, when we come back, we are finishing the countdown. That's right, and your top three are coming up. It's all in the Power Hour on Axis TV. Stay with us. Guys, I gotta show you this band that I discovered recently oh, from nice. Sacramento. They're incredible. Um, let's check this out, and we can even put it on oh, the video? monitor. Yeah, I can, I can link this to uh, the big screen for cool, Jake. Cool. Yep. Let's check it out. Uh, sorry, guys, that was, uh, Ew, I don't you, know who sent me that link. You're a freak. Welcome back to the Power Hour here on Axis TV. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm Josh Bernstein. It's Katie Babs. And this episode, of course, is as punk AF. That's right. We were recently at Bourbon Beyond where we caught up with legendary bass player, Sex Pistols founder, Glenn Matlock, who told us this story about Sid Vicious. What would surprise people uh, about him, that, you know, knowing him personally, that oh, you know, Sid. Uh, Sid, Sid Vicious, because okay. I think there, you know he's so much of an image now, and I think there's a real person there. I'm just curious, you know, maybe something. Well, that I think he was the, I think he was the image back then. I mean, when I did that, we did one show for a laugh. We decided on the Monday to do it, learnt a few songs, and played on the Friday. And back right. then, it was a real word of mouth thing, and the place was rammed. But we did all covers and all that, and I thought Sid was. You know, pretty good frontman singer, but what he didn't have, he didn't have the gift of the gab like John. So in a way, he was kind of like Elvis, you know. He, he was like a punk rock Elvis. He could interpret other people's songs. But, but that anyway, you. that was him. I'm here. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's check out your top ten so far. And look at Dirty Honey, who are at number eight this week. This song kept growing slowly up the radio charts, heading towards the top like it is on our countdown. All right, well, coming in at number three this week, it's legendary, iconic, it's the Beatles. They are back. It's now and then. I know it's true. It's all because of you. And if I make it through, it's all. All right, that band got their start at a club called The Cavern in Liverpool. Check it out when you get a chance. That was the Beatles, but now and then. Oh, they've had number one singles in, I think, how many decades now? I Is trust it? you. I never heard of them. At least five. It's they've pretty been incredible. Around for 300 years. <laughs> it's amazing. It's been 84 <laughs> years. <laughs> yes. Coming up at number two on the countdown this week, it's a band known as The Effect. You know, if Trev Lukather from the band is super talented, he wrote three songs and produced them on the last Dorothy album, as well as Love, Hate, Heartbreak from the very first Hailstorm album. He wrote that as well, the one that went gold. Fun fact. All right, well, let's hear it. Here's The Effect with Unwanted at number two. Seem to remind me why. Seem to be lost in time. That was the effect dropping a deuce here on our countdown. We can't thank those guys enough for being here. But that leads us to my favorite part of the week, the number one countdown. Now, guys, before you go any further, when we get to the number one video of the week, it is now brought to you by our friends at Rockabilia. Now, I noticed, Matt, you got a gorgeous rancid shirt. Rocky. Katie, you have a very nicely fitting Metallica shirt. I, of course, am sporting some in utero Nirvana. I want to thank our friends at Rockabilia who are going to bring us the number one video of the week. Can I get a drum roll? Ladies and gentlemen, the number one video of the week is Foo Fighters the Under Foo. You. Yeah. The Foos.
that's under you from the Foo Fighters. And of course, it's brought to you by Rockabilia. And don't forget, they're having their Black Friday sale for 25% off. Go to their website. The code is black. Now, Foo Fighters, speaking of which, I got to go see Dave Grohl play with his daughter, Violet. She was performing with Mike Garson, David Bowie's longtime keyboard player. I got the phone call. Hey, you want to come? So it was in a club with like 75 people. Kara and I sat right in front of the drum set, and it was great to see Dave Grohl doing Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box, his daughter's favorite Nirvana song. It was a family affair. Look at this. Our top 10 this week brought to you by Rocket Billion. Now, guys, we're going to be off next week for Thanksgiving. We're going to be with our respective families, carb loading as we do, but filling up these bellies, filling up these bellies, getting swole for the holidays. But, guys, when we come back, two weeks, Mr. Tim Montana. Tim Montana. And who else is going to join us, Matt? Also, legendary guitarist from Motley Crue has got a new solo record out. We're talking about the one and only Mick Mars is going to be here. Yeah, guys, before we get out of here, I want to cut my life into a little more pizza and hear a little Papa Roach. Well, that's Papa Roach and Leave a Light On. And uh, we're going to be leaving for two weeks. I look forward to seeing you guys when we get back. That's our show this evening for the Power Hour. I'm Matt Pinfield. I'm Josh Bernstein. And I'm Katie Babs. Have a great Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. <laughs>